beautiful day. Beautiful. nice sleep. That was a long night's sleep because I usually up here especially with storms and there's no moon now it is just as black as you can imagine. I usually get to bed probably around 7 30 you know it's about 7 30 in the morning now so you know that was 12 hours that's a long time for me to sleep. Montana 2004 Montana is very comfortable it takes just a little while to get used to kind of working in such a small space like this but it works out pretty good first thing i'll do now in the morning is i fold the bed back up get my office chair set up and then that way i'm able to maneuver around a little bit easier and eat breakfast and do things like that let me show you how that's done Here's the bed all set up right here. What's kind of funny is I've got curtains on the windows. Looks like I gotta clean my lens. But I have I have curtains on the windows. Now I don't have them on this window, the back window, the side window over here. I don't have them up. I actually have them stored right over here in this little container. I keep them in that little container right there. But when I'm traveling around and like I'll stay, you know, for a few hours at a Walmart or in a parking lot as I'm traveling through, I always put them up. But out here, I have no need to really put them up. I would much rather see if an animal or something walks up out here, I'd like to see what it is and film it. In the cities and stuff like that, passing through, you know, it's. I think it's more secure to go ahead. Keep the curtains closed and that way, you know, even if the police pull up and they hit you with the spotlight, it's not blaring you and you can eventually move a curtain and talk to them and get out and explain what you're doing. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead, this bed right here will fold up. The mattress that I sleep on is a Thermarest. It's a Thermarest Luxurious Series. It's pretty nice. I think this is a single. They actually make a backpacker version, which is about... It's not quite as wide as this one right here. It probably comes somewhere in this neighborhood, somewhere about right in here. That's a backpacker's version, which doesn't make any sense because if you're backpacking, you don't really need a luxurious series anyways, but they make one. Okay, the sleeping bag I brought on this trip, it's a field and stream. It's a big, bulky sleeping bag, but it is very comfortable. It's large, you can get in it. You don't have to worry about trying to uh, stay inside it. You don't have to worry about it being too tight. Fits on the bench that I built just right. Works out pretty good. And this bag right here is a 20 degree bag. So for a trip like this, that's gotten down into upper 30s, lower 40s. It's just absolutely perfect. So what I'll do is I'll fold it over. Uh, I'll move my pillows. Now here's another thing you always want to keep in mind. Let me zoom that out a little bit. Here's another thing you always want to keep in mind. I carry two pillows with me along. That's another nice thing about having the 2004 Pontiac Montana. I have a ton of room. Okay, there we go. I cleaned the lens a little bit. That's another thing on a trip. Yes, a lot of moisture involved. You know, you have a lot of moisture, you know, wet weather outside and stuff. You have to constantly clean your lenses. And a lot of people don't realize that on your phone, and I'm taping this with my phone because it's got this super wide angle lens on it, that you have to clean your lenses on your phone. A lot of people don't realize that. It's just like a camera. 
And in fact, it is a camera. Okay, so I'll fold that back. Always take you plenty of pillows. That's very, very important. You know, you don't want to get somewhere and have some kind of a little pillow and stress then... over it all night long and you're very uncomfortable because you didn't bring the proper pillows. And that's what's nice about the 2004 Pontiac Montana. It's I can take some luxurious items like a couple pillows, a giant large sleeping bag, a luxurious pad and i've got a very comfortable sleep okay there's my other curtains i was talking about i've got an insulation for pipe foam and i have the curtain and curtain rods rode up and i've got to put in there and i've got them sitting right there in that little section right there and this one right here i actually put up and it just stays up i kind of this was the first one i did and i kind of glued it on there and so it stays up but they work pretty nice it's very easy to pull them shut or to put them back and I'll put my pillows back up there. I like this little pillowcase, my bears and moose pillowcase. That'll go there. Now, one thing that I, I've also built that I customized for my bench, I'm the kind of person that when I sleep, I put a lot of pressure on my pillows upwards. I guess or toward the front my pillows kept the bench came to right here my pillows kept falling off down in this gap right here so i decided to go ahead and build me a headboard for it and that's what this is now this worked out pretty good because i actually built a shelving unit i'm not sure how well you can see that let me grab my let me grab my little light here see i built a shelving unit for it and it's at an angle so the seat can still be in its proper position the drive this passenger seat can be in its proper position but you can see that i've got a unit and I, I store a lot of my camera equipment things like that in there but the main thing is is it works as a headboard keeping my pillows from falling off of that gap so that worked out pretty good all right so i'll take my sleeping pad now i don't deflate it i just go ahead and it it's able to i can fold it up like this right here and so it'll basically go like that. Now, I had this blanket in here. This is a moving blanket. And I just go ahead and put it down on the plywood itself. I think it kind of protects the bottom of the, of the pad that I use. It also adds just a little bit more warmth underneath you. When you're camping in cold weather, it's very important that you have insulation underneath you. It's the same as having a sleeping bag or a big cover on top. You need something underneath you too. So... You don't get cold from the bottom up. Okay, trying to get my phone to work here. I'm not sure if this is gonna tape or not. But So what happens is this bed, this piece right here will fold up and I'll just lift, lift everything up in the back here. The bed folds down inside there. Just like that. Okay. And then now my pad. I can fold my pad out like this, put a pillow on top of it, this pad, this packing pad will go just like that right there. Got my old Scriba stick on standby, and my chair comes up, there we go. Yeah, I know I talk about how nice the 2004 Pontiac Montana is, but man... <laughs> It really is. Look at the studio. Windows all the way around. Nice office chair. I set myself up a little table. Ooh, it's a little bit dirty right there. But see, that's what you're going to find when you come to Lake Superior. Coming in and out of the door. The sand, I guess, is a little bit dirty. Or not really dirty, but the sand's darker. So when you come in and out, that's what you're going to have right there. It's just something you deal with. When you get home, you clean it up, you go on with it. But I'll set myself up a little table there so I can work on my laptop. It's pretty nice. And I've got this view all the way around. All right, so there we go. So there's my office chair. The bed's all folded in the back. I've got my food, cooler, some warm clothes packed over here in the side. You can see that shelving unit I built. So what I'm going to do at this point right here is... I've been out on the road, let's see, Sunday, Monday, today's Tuesday, so this is going on the third day. At this point here, I will drink me a super coffee. Mmm, very good. I highly recommend them. 
I'll drink a super coffee, uh, have a little breakfast, and then I'm going to organize stuff. When you're on the road like this, it's very important to stay organized. And about every other day, just redo everything and make sure everything is in the right spot. You just don't want your vehicle to become a total mess as you drive down the road day to day. I've got spare clothes up above on the rack system. My spare clothes bag, bring it down, change everything I've got on, change it over to something new. And then that way there, you kind of feel, kind of feel like a fresh start. I just talked to a nice guy who works for the park department. He was telling me about, yeah, about 15th or 16th, they'll shut everything down except for the visitor's center where you can pull in as a visitor and walk the beach and that'll still stay open for a while. But you know, the premise is basically that if they keep it long, out here and a lot of people you know you could have a two foot snowfall hit and people are stranded out here and then you're going to have to have emergency crews try to come out here and try to get them so it's not a good thing so it makes sense for them to shut it down when they do appreciate that i made it at least the last week of the year next year i think i'm going to try to go ahead and go back to booking in september because i just think that way there you it gives you a little bit of a leeway here if I can't make this or the weather was horrible, if you can't get in here, you're done. You're done for the year. you got to wait till next year. So next year, I'm going to bump it back up into September. We'll see how it goes. Appreciate you coming along. Hey, hopefully we're going to get out there and hike today. We'll see how it goes. I was kind of getting everything ready. I'm going to take some stuff off the top of the Montana here. But I got to thinking, you know, I haven't even went down and said good morning to Lake Superior yet. Here here and say good morning to Miss Superior and then we'll go back here and finish what we're doing. Hey, I actually see the horizon turning a little bit light here. Pretty cool. is number three and what's pretty nice is you have this sand dune right here so see when I come over the top of it that blocks quite a bit of wind right there and that's what you kind of need you know you don't want to be just where you're getting blasted like at number 25 the wind comes up and just blasts right through your camp this right here makes a big difference although if it was windy enough like it has been the last couple days you know, you still are suffering quite a bit of wind coming through here. You know, if you got any kind of a tent that's not going to hold up, it's going to get shredded. Any kind of a camper should do fine. Here's a reason to individually tie all your things down because now I can get my clothes bag out yet everything else is tied on and if I had to take off right now and go down the highway it's all going to be fine. So that's why I don't stuff up there and tie it all with two or three straps. I individually tie everything. It's a real good idea. Good idea to have these dry bags too. This right here is a sea line 35 day bag. Everything is totally dry in here. You can go down the highway no matter how bad it's raining. When you get there, everything is totally dry. A lot of places to tie it down with. Highly recommend one. Yeah, one reason why I like bringing the 2004 Pontiac Montana to camp in. Oh, it's starting to rain here. I'm going to have to get in pretty quick. 
is because you also have an added protection. You have all these pine trees up here. All these pine trees, and you can look at any one of them have limbs kind of that are broken off. You know, Lake Superior is just so hard. I was sleeping, I heard something hit the top, and I wasn't sure what it was. Well, here, here it is right here. You can see I've got a couple pieces that came down. Now, you know, whether or not that would come through a tent or not, I it don't... all depends how it fell. It what? may not hurt you, but it would sure put a hole in your tent. That's kind of why I like having the Montana because it works pretty good. Yeah, once again, the water down there, you can see the water. Here comes the rain. Yeah, the whole lake is turned this way now. It's almost, the water's almost disappeared out there from sight. I'm gonna get in there and I gotta clean my lens off again. That's just the way it goes. Yep, it's settling in to be a rainy day here on Lake Superior. Woo! Through hiker. Tough, amigo, tough. This just caught my eye that I have hanging inside the 2004 Pontiac, Montana. Anybody know what this is? I always hang one inside my camping vehicle or wherever I'm staying out in the wilderness. It kind of wards off evil spirits. Some people believe, some don't. I think there's some evil spirits out there floating around. Especially during Halloween season. Ooh. Dark blue water. Way out on the horizon. A lot of times that means strong wind coming in. Well, I got all cleaned up, got a total change of clothes on, which is pretty nice. It actually feels pretty good. You know, you wear clothes for two days, and on that third day, yeah, it's time to change them. You know, in weather like this, they don't get dirty. It just feels good to put clean clothes on. I'm not sure why. But I got to hook up my fingers with some new Band-Aids. Had these on for a while. My skin gets so dry, and especially the depending on the type of work I'm doing, my fingers and places will tend to start cracking. So I've got to always protect them and make sure that uh, that I keep them clean. So you know, I got to thinking, you know, Lake Superior is not playing well this morning as far as hiking goes, because every time I think there's going to be a little bit of a change out there, uh, more rain comes in. Actually, it seems like almost more rain today than yesterday which is hard to believe. Yesterday was just a heavy mist. Just a little bit ago, you could actually hear it on top of the Montana. It was coming down. So I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of hang out, just kind of be patient. I believe by looking at the horizon right now, I believe it's getting light out there again, which a lot of times it starts to clear out up here and yet the wind will still be blowing. I think tomorrow the wind will steadily die down and we'll definitely be able to hike tomorrow, which is good. Uh, yeah, let me give you a shot of this horizon. It's looking better out there right now than I've seen it all day for sure. Okay, there you go. You can see way out there. It's not looking too bad actually. So we'll see what happens as the afternoon goes on. It's early afternoon, right around noon. Yeah, this is a good indication of what kind of day it is. I just stepped out of the Montana, looked out, horizon's getting a little bit light, and I thought, hey, that don't look too bad. Threw on my big coat, grabbed my Nikon B700, stepped outside, walked around the van, all of a sudden rain started coming in. Now I don't feel too much of it, but you can just tell it's one of those days you never know.
Yeah, you can tell it's a second wave coming in. It's pretty interesting to see that. That big gale that came through this afternoon, it's gone now. And it kind of started clearing off and calming down. And now here comes a second burst coming through. You know, I was sitting here thinking about what was triggering my light. We were talking about it earlier. You know, it's possible, you know, animals, especially if animals are going from point A to point B, you know, they'll choose a road to walk on or a nice beaten path in the forest. A lot of people think that if they're hiking, out hiking and they're on a trail, well, that's not the trail that the animals would use. They walk through the forest. Well, animals are, are a creature of habit and a creature of comfort, so to speak, as far as if they've got to go somewhere, they're going to pick the easiest path to walk on. It's possible the motion detector are picking up animals that are walking on that road at night. Especially since the campground is only, uh, you know, I would say at the most, the campground is maybe 25% full. I'll make a slight little comment here about the through hikers. There's a couple more. Tough as nails to be out in weather like this. You know, whether it's going to rain on them. You know, the strong wind, the cold, there was two of them as a couple just went by and they're actually heading in the opposite direction. That's the first ones that I've seen that are heading east. Most people this time of year are heading west, is what has always surprised me. It's hunting season right now. I'm pretty sure they're hunting deer, you know, bear. I don't know if bear season's still in or not, but you know, they're dressed totally in black. It just seems odd to be wearing all black and black bear season is in and you're walking through the woods. Every hunter I've ever met and most hunters are just so responsible, but just in case there's somebody out there that's poaching or doing something they're not supposed to be doing or maybe intoxicated, drinking, whatever, you name it. It just seems like you don't want to be dressed in all black coming through the woods on a dark day like this and somebody's out there wanting to shoot a bear a black bear I don't know tell me what you think yeah this is interesting this front coming through see the temperature is dropping big time right now and the wind is definitely picking up I don't feel any moisture in the air but I cannot see that horizon out there so I would think that there's going to be a lot of moisture in that still never been here before you wouldn't realize that you'd be thinking what the heck oh yeah there's a wind shift going on too yeah the wind has just now moved over and it's coming more out of the northwest rather than the north interesting very interesting As I was talking about the weather I just noticed this up here got to run down here by the water real quick and show you this. This front's coming in, but it's going to be a lot of moisture. I better hurry before I can get there before this hits. This is a gale coming in right now. This is a big time gale coming in. Check this out.
get back into Montana. I bet it's dropped 20 degrees out there. That is a gale out there. You can almost see the edge of it from the left to the right. But I've seen those come in, and man, when they hit, they're like a blast. All right, pretty cool to see. So, what are the possibilities? Rabbit? Doubt it. Squirrel, chipmunk? I haven't seen any. They seem to be burled in wherever they're going. And it's, it's pretty cold. It's not like it's a warm night. I did see a blackbird today hopping along the ground. It was like it was so windy and wet to fly, but they actually operate on the ground. That was kind of cool. But I don't think so. Not a bird at night. I haven't heard any owls. Haven't heard any coyotes. Come to think of it, up here at 12 Mile Beach, I don't know if I've ever heard coyotes. I know there's been a couple times I've heard a wolf. Howling pretty far away. It seems like always to the west of 12 Mile Beach. Could be a wolf. Could be a raccoon. I think I've seen raccoons up here before, but not near like down south. But I've seen raccoons up here before. And it could be a skunk. In lower Michigan, I've encountered skunks before camping. Could be a skunk. I don't know. Badger, I doubt it. Never seen one up here. But what it could be, what's a good possibility, could be a bear. Could be a black bear. Because it is, I think bear season is coming close to an end. I think it opens sometime in September. They harvest a lot of bear up here. So it could be a bear walking in. But the only thing about that is when that light goes off, when the light goes off, it wakes me up instantly. So I jump up and I, instantly I start looking out the windows. And I haven't seen anything yet. And I'm not so sure a bear would move that fast or not. Of course, if it was a person... They may take off running real fast or walk away. Or, if they were more stealthy, they would just duck behind a tree. Kind of like, you know, line up with the tree. You know how they do like in cartoons and stuff. You line up behind a tree and nobody can see you. Possibility. And then the last possibility would be if it's spirits, ghosts, something like that. But I wouldn't think my motion detector would pick up on those. So there's a, there's a question for you. There's a comment. Comment on that. Do you think if there was a spirit or a ghost out here, would a motion detector on an LED light pick them up? I want to know. Stepping out, Lake Superior. Have some motion detector lights with me. At night, they are picking up stuff walking out here. Yet I can't see it when the light comes on. If it was a ghost or a spirit, would the motion detector pick them up? I'm not exactly sure what these clouds are called when they're layered like that, but they are definitely lining up and coming in. Fuji was was filming because the light wasn't blinking on the back this is the Fuji XP I haven't used it before I'm gonna go ahead and take it on down and see what it'll do film a little bit of the water right now what I was saying is the Fuji XP is kind of like my a900 now when I flip the screen up I can't see what I'm filming so I don't know if the Fuji in fact I'm gonna check it right now 
so the light is still blinking so I'm thinking it's still filming but I like that when you can see the flip LCD screen and you can see what you're filming the Canon and the B700 Nikon flip out to the side you got to be careful with that because it looks like I'm talking like this all the time rather than looking into the camera and looking at you so that's why I like the a900 because it flips up but for some reason it has malfunctioned may just have to get it worked on okay i'm hoping this is still filming let's go down to the water. okay so the, the fuji is rolling right now let's walk down to the water and let's see what happens let's see if you can even hear me right now what i'm saying on the speaker on the fuji Pretty spectacular. Yeah, the wind is picking up more and more out there. Yeah, now see, if you were camping here and you haven't been through this, you're probably getting pretty bummed out because... You woke up this morning and everything's damp and still was about the same temperature and you thought, okay, well, it's going to get a little warmer as the day goes on. And But now it's getting colder and more windy and still have that mist in the air. You're probably starting to get a little bit bummed out and probably thinking you made a mistake. But, hey, when you come to Superior, that's, that's what it's like. So, like, I'm just chilling here in Montana. Ain't a whole lot I can do, really, Only but I like light. I like filming the cars going by, and I like to film some animals, but I think they're up for the wintertime. So it's just kind of cool to sit here and chill out and, hey, wait to see what happens next. It's what it's like being a YouTube creator. Oh, by the way, thanks to all my subscribers. I appreciate everyone that has subscribed to the channel, and also... Hey, if you're just checking out the channel, you like to visit now and then, hey, I appreciate you dropping by too. LAF, Space Film Fest, capital LAF. Oh, wait a minute, look. There we go, random. Hey, I just like doing that. I mean, there's, there's all kind of things going on. It's just, it's kind of cool to just sit here and just watch everybody go by and what's going on. Hey, anyways, LAF Space Film Fest, capital LAF Space Film Fest. Hey, if you would, hammer down that subscribe button. Hammer down. Like the old frog out there in the flag. He's hammered down. He's holding her down. All right. Hey, helps me to go places like this. Film the beauty, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, the 12-mile campground beach, Picture Rocks, National Lakeshore. Fishing pole or not on this trip. Hey, a thought just crossed my mind. This weather, I love this weather. This is the perfect weather for me to be at Lake Superior. Been here in the summertime, been here in the spring. Well, late, late, late spring, last May. Summertime, throughout early fall, middle fall, and now late fall. And I just love this weather. This weather is nice. Just got to dress for it. Don't get wet, no matter what. And just ride it out because it changes so fast up here. It's pretty cool. Hey, I never really showed you what I've got in my bags. This bag right here has got all my extra warm clothes. So I've got my good rain suit in there. Anything I need to survive, no matter how cold it gets out here, I've got it in that bag right there. And in these two crates right here, I've got a stove, several canisters of fuel, and some emergency gear, jumper cables, things like that, tent stakes. There. And now see, I may not even open those on this trip. I don't see any reason to get into them if I don't. Once again, they're individually tied down. I can take one off at a time if I need to. 
come around the back right here this black bag has got a dozen bottles of water in it if I need it next to it is one gallon of extra gas just in case I ran that close that should take me 22 miles this is something my new box that I bought it's a Plano I haven't seen these yet it's a Plano sportsman but I've got my backpack in there ready to go here comes some rain right now and then the last is this big storage bag here and in it I have a try awning a chair a few other items I may not even break it out but there you go that's the Yakima load warrior I highly suggest you get one all right the rain's coming in wanted to go ahead and throw a few things up on the Montana in one of the gear bags I have up there but with this rain coming in like this it's just a real heavy mist it's, it's not, not even what I really call a rain because you could you could hear the rain on top of here if it was raining hard it's just more of a super heavy mist and the water has become you can barely see the water out there you know what I thought was a lighter horizon is now completely disappeared that's Lake Superior you never know what's gonna happen out here you just got to deal with it and I was gonna put a couple things up there you know I bought a couple extra course of oil I brought along with me a um, couple ice packs I had in the cooler you know in the very start I was gonna put those up there and I've got plenty of water so I got a couple water jugs here that I was gonna put up in a gear bag once again when you're working with a limited amount of space like this you don't need junk in the way you don't need stuff sitting in the way that's gonna take up space Also, with this rain I decided not to put it up there because when you're camping out here in the north country like this you know you got to be very very careful you don't get wet that's so important because you could be standing out there and like even my sock hat now it feels pretty dry but in a matter of 10 minutes all of a sudden my sock hat gets a little bit damp well, it's not gonna dry out here it's so cold out here and, and you know maybe the wind might help but you just got to be careful you stay dry all the time really really important in the north Now, here's something else I found out that works pretty nice you know when you're camping out here bring you a whisk broom something like this right here and that way every time you get in and out of your vehicle you can take and you can you can sit there and brush your brush your boots off like that and brush them off on this side and that way there you know you're going to get some sand the wet sand is always going to get in but it's going to be you can kind of just sweep it back out and it's not going to be much of a mess if you went out and bought you a brand new vehicle and you're bringing it to Lake Superior in October, <laughs> I hope you have enough patience to not worry about it getting dirty because it is going to get dirty. This wet sand will stick to everything no matter what. You just something you just have to deal with. Once again, I like the 2004 Pontiac Montana because I don't have to worry about it. Once I get home, if I, if I you know if I want to take a hose and spray it out, I will. I don't have to worry about it you know and that makes a big difference I've traveled in new vehicles before and it's uh, it works on your nerves a little bit to see them get dirty like this it's the way it goes out here here's that piece of wood that's one of them there's actually two pieces there's a couple pieces underneath the rack system but this is that piece that came down you know it's not real heavy it may have just bounced off a tent I don't know but stuff like this falls all the time and you just got to be careful with that that's why I kind of like the security of the Montana you know if you had a camper here a hard shell camper you would be okay uh, if I had my Coleman Sun Valley I'd be a little bit nervous something might something like this might go through the canvas possibly it's pretty sharp on a couple of It got me thinking and I caught myself and I want to pass this on to you. If you're a YouTube creator or if you're somebody that likes to go out and film on location, always have a camera in your hand or in your pocket close by. Even if you're going to walk 20 feet to a picnic table and come back, you never know when something is going to happen. Like, bam, there it is. So you want to make sure that you always have something with you. Let me go over there and fix the froggy flag. 
Okay, I got out there and fixed the frog, and I noticed the flagpole was leaning, so I was able to American ingenuity put it together so now the flagpole is sticking straight up. Check it out. I'll add it to this video. Yeah, here comes another gale. Coming in. Look at that. Woo! They say when the Edmund Fitzgerald got hit, there was a ship not far from it watching it and it just disappeared in a bank of fog and fury just like this. Never to be seen again. Yeah, it's getting bad out there. Yeah, you wouldn't want to venture far away from your camp. From your safety shelter right now with, with weather like this. Man, it wouldn't take long. My jacket's a little bit damp. I'm going to put it here to dry off. It wouldn't take long. Boy, you get caught out in bad weather like this for hypothermia to set in fast. Super fast. Yeah, that's funny. I didn't expect the weather to kind of be this way. I didn't think it was going to keep getting this bad periodically throughout the day. It's kind of wild to see it. Once again, I'm glad I got the Montana with me. It's a nice little shelter to get into, let these storms go by. Maybe it'll still clear up tonight and get a sunset. I don't know. It's looking kind of slim right now, but we'll see. in the afternoon I think I still have rain showers coming in but I'm gonna go ahead and go down here I'm gonna walk down on the beach I see the water is residing just a little bit which is a good sign I'm gonna go on down here and see what it looks like down on the water the cliffs at Picture Rocks National Lakeshore. Well, I got to looking. I wonder what ate this seabird. So I kind of started looking around and I see some tracks here. tracks right there. And whatever it was went on down. It's showing its claws. It's laying right there. And so I follow the tracks up here and the tracks come on up. 
There's one. So the animal went on up this hill, went on up the bank right here. So that might have been what was triggering my light last night. If something had come down here and walked down, attacked this seabird, ate this seabird, and then went back up. Had a nice supper and went back up. It's highly possible. Because whatever it was, the set of tracks just basically go from the seabird, go from the seabird on up the dune right here. So it had a nice supper and went right back up. get out of your tent come on down to the water right now it's starting to rain again and I see a rainstorm coming in right here so I'm gonna have to get back up to Montana but always take your break and come down you never know what you're gonna find you know rather than to just sit in your camper and be bummed out all day just come on down here check it out I got a feeling tomorrow's gonna be a pretty good day I just got that feeling this filming's going to turn out I can't see what I'm filming I'm just kind of pointing the camera in a general direction This little rainstorm go by hey right up here that is where number three you just go right on up that sand dune right there and that's where number three is so I can't tell you this from experience you can camp all the way down on the west side number three is on the east side at the beginning of the campground the dune is in much better shape on the east side than it is farther down to the west. The farther down to the west you go, the more that dune is almost like straight up and down now. Everything is washed out and caving in. Down here, this is in still pretty good shape. This whole dune down through here is in pretty good shape here. But as you get way down to the west, man, it's just sheer up and down. I'm not sure why one side is better than the other. You can see my tracks going down. I'm going to go back up there. And maybe, uh, maybe I've seen some blue sky. I see some sun shining through. So it's possible I might get a sunset tonight yet. An hour and a half to go to sunset. We'll see.
pretty good view out my sliding door. Yeah, it's kind of funny. The people that that live the van life, you know, there's a big movement in America, probably started two or three years ago. Of course, it's been going on for a lot longer than that, but this movement really became strong in America to uh, for people to travel around and live in their vans. 100% all the time live in their vans. And I followed it pretty close. You know, the smart designers, they have a little niche for everything. Whatever you pack along with you, whatever you decide to keep, that is the only space that you have in your entire life to keep stuff in. So they'll have it all designed. Mine isn't like that because I don't live out of the Montana all the time. I do like everything to be organized. And so mine is more of a bulk area, but it's very important to always have space for yourself when you travel around. Gonna enjoy a super coffee. So windy and cold, you know I wanted to make toast and eggs and some bacon and do something like that, but it's just so windy out here, you just can't do it. And there's no shelter houses, enclosed shelter houses that I know around here. So you just gotta have, uh, you know, drop back punt. Yeah, I feel like I need to apologize to all my subscribers. Hey, everybody that kind of has gotten used to me posting, I do a lot of posts on these, what they call YouTube shorts. So I post one of those every day. I try to put out a long version of a video once a week, but now it's probably gonna be about two or three weeks before one gets out. Every once in a while, I will have somebody write me and say, hey man, where's your videos? I haven't seen them yet. So I guess people are kind of getting used to seeing them, you know, kind of like a, like a TV show that comes out once a week. I apologize for that. I won't have anything out because I am totally off the grid out here. So it's everything I can do to take, I've got five cameras, Fuji, Nikon, Nikon, Canon, phone. Yeah, I got five cameras going out here. And so every evening before I go to bed, I'm dumping all that data into an external drive. Once I get to the office back home, then I take all that information and try to sort it out, organize it. And, and you know, I'll probably come back, you know, I'll probably come back with, oh, I don't know, maybe maybe four or five videos of this trip, maybe, maybe more, I don't know. It's a pretty short trip. You know, I've been here 10 days. I've been here 10 days before. Actually, a couple years ago, I made it 14 days. I came here for 14 days and that's your limit. And that was with me and my dog, Sammy. That was like a sweet trip. Man, we got slammed, bad weather, good weather. We got it all, that trip. I've got videos on all of it. Go to the playlist. UP of Michigan. They also might be in the playlist. The Lake Superior, 12-mile campground. I'm not sure. I've got to go in and organize all that. Wish I had somebody help me organize that. Man, I just... It's, I've gotten busy as a YouTube creator, and it's, it's a good thing. All right, I'm going to finish up finish up my super coffee hey i've had even had some people saying hey how much super coffee paying you to do that promotion zero i contacted them and said hey you know i drink your coffee and i mention it a lot you guys interested in, in me helping you out any no response i take that as a no <laughs> all right almost done starting to clean okay up. had to fix the flagpole to make sure it was going to stick up straight Oh, froggy's hanging in there. The great USA. Oh, yeah. So that's a pretty cool camper right there. Coming in, they're probably uh, traveling around for fall. So being out here at 12 Mile Beach, you're off the grid. You've got no cell signal. You have no way of communicating with the public out there, with the rest of the world. You're basically here surviving like we used to for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years, you know, without cell phone service. I just realized, I was out here messing with my frog and my flag. I'm starting to get the hint that it's getting colder out here. The wind is picking up and it's getting colder. The fact that I don't have my radar, which normally I'd pull my phone up, look at my radar, see what's going on. There's a secondary front coming in right now. I got a feeling it's gonna get windy, it's gonna get cold, but the precip is going to gradually go away, which is nice, 
and tomorrow it's going to be windy and I think I'm going to see some blue skies tomorrow. We'll see. See, I'm taking care of my fingers. I'm going to go ahead and bandage them up. And then at that point right there, I don't know. If the moisture stops coming down, I'm going to get out there and film those waves. The skies are even getting lighter right now. That's always a good sign. Hopping out. Yeah, this is pretty exciting stuff right here. Seeing this gale front just all of a sudden appear out there and come blasting in like that, that's just amazing. Total wind shift. The wind went from the northeast to the north and now to the northwest. Another little front. This must be a lot of fronts just pushing through one after the other. Lake Superior, glad to be back. UP of Michigan. If you've never traveled up in the UP of Michigan, if you can't make it this year, next year, spring, summer, fall, come on up. Hey, if you like winter sports, tons of snowmobile, cross-country skiing, all kind of stuff like that to do, big time. If you'd rather hike and camp, do things like that, Come on up here, bring a couple dollars, buy some things from the locals up here. They appreciate the business, they appreciate the help up here. Nice place to come. UP of Michigan, Upper Peninsula.